is Jan Mari. I'm from the University of Puerto Rico. And today I'll be presenting my project that I've been developing in the Duke of Salas, titled Hormonal Modulation of Root System Architecture in Wild Tomatoes Under Salt Stress. The increase in human population and reduction in land available for cultivation are two threats for agricultural sustainability. This causes environmental stress responses, such as extreme temperatures, drought, high winds, and soil salinity. Soil salinity is when soluble salts gets retained in the soil. This can occur either naturally or because of improper human activity, particularly farming. Some plant species known as allophytes are adapted to live in salt stress and live in saline soils. However, nearly all crop plants are not adapted to salt stress and under salt stress, their, their development and growth seems reduced. This is the reason why it is important to design and develop salt tolerant plants that can cope with these environmental fluctuations. Here we can observe that we have a phylogenetic tree. The first thing I would like to show you is that we have the Solano Lico persicum, which is our cultivated tomato. And right under the cultivated tomato, we have Solano pinellifolium, which is the wild tomato species. As you can observe in this phylogenetic tree, um, wild tomatoes are the closest relative to cultivated tomatoes. This is important because wild tomato species are an important source for genetic improvement for cultivated tomatoes, mainly because wild tomato species are adapted to live under uh, abiotic stress, including soil salinity. Since roots are at the interface of soil salinity, many breeding programs target root architectural traits to develop and to improve crop tolerance and yield. Previously, Julkowska and her colleagues have visually identified four root topologies by screening 230 accessions of Solano Pintinelli pollen, which are Christmas tree, telephone pole, droopy telephone pole, and broomstick. <laughs> now we wonder if hormonal treatment affects this root topology. And for this, we ask two main questions. First, how hormonal treatment is involved in the creation of these root topologies? Can we change from one root topology to another one by the use of hormonal treatment? And second, what is the biological significance of these root topologies in overall plant salt stress response? But how do we study root system architecture? First, we take the seeds and we sterilize them with 50% bleach for 10 minutes. Then we proceed to incubate them overnight in cold and expose them to light. Once we have these seeds, we place them in a control place as we can see in day one. After five days, these seedlings are already germinated and we transfer them to, tra to treatment plants that to treatment plates, sorry, and that can be either control or salt. Starting from day five, we start scanning them for five consecutive days, as you can see in this animation of the growth of one seed tree. Once we have these scanned images, we are able to analyze them using the plugin Smart Root in the program ImageJ, and we are able to root trace, as we can see in here. And then this data we can further analyze it in R. After we finish this scanning period, we wait till day 15 to harvest these seedlings. We harvest the root and the sheet and we measure the fresh weight. Then we store these samples in paper bags that then are transferred to an oven where we wait for them to dry at 60 degrees Celsius for a couple of days. Once these samples are dry, we transfer them to ICPMS tubes and we, well, first we measure the dry weight and then we transfer them to the tubes. <laughs> and then we send them to Miguel Pinero's lab at USDA for ICPMS for ion content analysis for sodium and potassium. From the previous 230 accessions that were screening, um, three accessions were chosen. First, we can observe that we have our cultivated tomato, and two accessions who have contrast traits 
relate, related to salt stress. First, we have the well, well sensitive that have shown to be sensitive to salt stress. And then we have these other wild tomato that have shown to be tolerant to salt stress. Among the traits studied, my mentor, Miriam, she studied salt tolerance index or SPI, which is the ratio of the value for the sodium chloride treated plants over the value for the control. She found interesting data regarding these two accessions. In this graph, we can observe in the X axis that we have again our three accessions, with, which are cultivated tomato, well sensitive, and well tolerant. In our top graph, we can observe that we have SDA based on increase in lateral root number. Something interesting that we can observe in this graph is that the cultivated tomato have the highest number of lateral roots. In the bottom graph, we can observe that we have SDA based on average lateral root growth. And in this graph, we can observe that the well tolerant tomato have a highest length of lateral roots. In addition to all these root traits, she also analyzed the sodium content of these accessions. The ICPMS analysis showed that first, both cultivated and wild tolerant maintain equal sodium content in the root. Second, she also observed that the cultivated tomato um, preserved the same similar way in between the shoot and the root. And finally, that wild tomatoes maintain higher sodium content in the shoot. Now, we want to see how hormonal treatment can modulate this root system architecture. For this, we decided to study two plant stress hormones. The first one is acetic acid, or ABA, which in previous work have shown to regulate the production of lateral roots and control root elongation by modulating cell division and elongation. And the second hormone we study was ethylene, or ACC, which have shown to cause growth reduction in main root and lateral root length, and it is involved in root hair development. We have our six conditions, which are control, low hormone, high hormone, salt, salt plus low hormone, and salt plus high hormone. These concentrations were chosen in base of previous work in other species. Here we have our scan images of day nine, and we can observe that here we have our three accessions and here we have our six conditions. First, I want you to focus on the control plate. We can observe that the main root almost touches the bottom of the plate. However, when we observe the ABA condition and the salt condition, we see that the main root and the lateral root length is reduced. We can also see that there's a reduction in lateral root number. And when we focus in the ABA plus salt, there's a further reduction of this architectural trait. Um, regarding the root system architecture, these three accessions have been previously identified as Christmas tree. When we observe in the AVA, we can observe that it went from Christmas tree to telephone. However, when we observe the AVA under salt, we, it's really hard to visually determine a topology because there is little, little, little lateral roots. Here, I present to you a graph made with the fresh weight data. We can observe that with a low concentration of ABA, there is no significant difference in the root weight, except for the root samples treated with low ABA, where we can observe it, um, it had a similar weight to the control conditions. Now, here we can observe as well, the day nine scan place, but for the ACC treatment, again, we have our three accessions and we have our six conditions. Here's something more interesting happened. Again, I want you to remind, remember that in the control, we observed that the main root almost touches the bottom of the plate, but with the ACC and the salt, the main root and the lateral root length seem reduced. However, when we observe the cultivated tomato and well sensitive tomato, it seemed to have reduced the lateral root number. However, when we observe the wild tolerant tomato, it seemed to have preserved the same number of lateral roots. And then, but when we study the ACC under soft stress, we observe that it actually increased the number of lateral roots in comparison with the ACC alone. 
Regarding the root uh, architecture, as I previously mentioned, these three architectures are known to be Christmas tree. When we observe uh, in the ACC, we can observe a droopy telephone pole. And even when the ACC is under salt stress, we can still determine uh, telephone pole characteristics, mainly because the ACC seems to enhance lateral root development. Other observation that I made when observing this plate is that the lateral roots seems to be more fussy, which um, is like a sign that it has more, la more, more root hair. So that seems to have improved root hair development. Here, I have a graph again of the fresh weight, but this time for the ACC treatment. And we can observe that first, ACC treatment do not change the root, root fresh weight in cultivated and wild tolerant tomatoes. However, when we observe the wild sensitive, we observe that the uh, ACC actually increased the fresh weight in comparison with the control. We can also see that the ACC treatment decreased shoot fresh weight. And finally, that the ACC treatment results seem to not change the fresh weight in both root and shoot. Overall, we could observe in this graph that the ACC treatment impacts fresh weight in an accession and tissue dependent manner. Now, this brings me to the end of my talk. Overall, both AVA and ACC hormones show to affect overall root system architectural traits. And regarding, regarding the treatments of hormones, the AVA treatment showed to reduce both main and lateral root length. And finally, the ACC treatment showed to reduce main root and lateral root length, but seemed to increase lateral root number under the soil. For the future, we expect to analyze root tracing data in R both for both ABA and ACC, to analyze the sodium content for root and shoot samples for both hormones, and finally, to continue screening root system architecture with other hormonal treatments. Now, uh, I would like to thank everyone who made this project possible, starting with Dukovska lab member, and especially to my mentor, Miriam, who guided me during this summer to um, develop this project, as well as the other lab member. Then I would like to thank Miguel Pinero's lab and Eric Kraft for analyzing over 300 samples of IPPMS. <laughs> and finally, to the RE program organizers and funding agencies. Thank you. Thank you.